There is madness and then there is the method behind that madness. But the adjective madness is there because more often than not, people are too lazy to decipher the reason. It means that madness is a relative term. In the political sphere, it depends on the party in power. But one thing is certain and that is a party's decision grounded in the actual history and moral system of the land certainly deserves applause from every section. Namaste and welcome to TFI English, the national socio-political analysis arm of the TFI Media Group. I'm your host Piyush and if you are watching us on Facebook, give our page a like. And if you are watching us on YouTube, like the video and subscribe to the channel. Coming back to the story, in this video, I'm here to tell you how PM Modi is dismantling Abrahamic influence from our daily lives. Let's begin. The Modi government has decided to rename Rajpath and the Central Vista Lawns. Now, the renewed name is inclusive of the Indic moral system. Rajpath, the name whose pronunciation gives the subconscious signal of exclusive zone of kings and inaccessible rulers will now be called Kartavyapath. The new name gives the message that the place is reserved for those who do their duty diligently and not for those who use it to form a modern day monarchy. It is also a message to politicians that they will be here only for five years and until they fulfill their duties, they will not be brought back. Karyapath is not the only renamed path. Earlier, Racecourse Road was renamed Lok Kalyan Mark. Similarly, Aurangzeb Road was changed to APJ Abdul Kalam Road. Dalhousie Road was changed to Tara Sikhon Road. The move to rename is in line with PM Modi's Independence Day speech of getting over colonial hangover in our polity. PM Modi and his cabinet understands that symbolism has great significance in a country's march towards greatness. The understanding starts to get reflected in the first few months of the Modi cabinet as well. One of the first and possibly the most revolutionary decisions was to change the way in which policymakers used to brainstorm. The planning commission, a relic of socialist era and an outdated concept, had evolved into having too much power into the hands of center. The commission was effectively creating a top-down hierarchy in Indian polity. The Modi government dismantled it and introduced Niti Aayog, with a vision of maximum governance, minimum government, echoing the spirit of cooperative federalism, a bottom-up and more inclusive approach. Another challenge in the implementation of policies was the removal of unnecessary and impractical laws. These laws were introduced by the British in order to have maximum control over our population. Successive governments after independence found them useful in sustaining their hegemony. They only repealed 1,301 such laws from the country. During his campaign for the 2014 general elections, Prime Minister Narendra Modi had emphasized how old laws are creating hurdles in the path of country's development. He had promised to repeal 10 obsolete laws for every new law his government would introduce. By the end of 2019, the Modi government had repealed 1,582 such laws, which were just a burden on rule books. It paved the way for more trust between the public and the government. The trust factor was also introduced by a self-attestation mechanism. Earlier, common folks had to visit Sarkari Babus in order to communicate to the government that he is a good citizen. It was a straightforward humiliation of individual dignity and was introduced by the British to keep Indians enslaved to their trusted Babus. Unfortunately, Things did not change until PM Modi came to power. Now people have to self-attest their documents and the government trusts them. Not only the public, the Modi government also developed cordial relationships with the armed forces. Earlier, governments had not been acting on the proposal of unified command under a single armed forces chief. Obviously, the fear was that if all three forces operated on one command, unpopular policies of the government could be used as an excuse to affect a coup. The fear compromised our national security. 
the Modi government changed this attitude with the creation of a post called Chief of Defence Staff. Now all three units of armed forces have one centralised command and there is extremely less chance of bureaucratic hurdles. The decision gave more teeth to our forces. The practice of giving more teeth to our forces by introducing modernization was actually started by Shabaji Maharaj. He was the one who made Indian naval power into what it is today. Naturally, it was absurd that St. George's Cross was still in its insignia. The Modi government changed it. The new insignia is more in line with India's own naval firepower, which was given its modern teeth by Shivaji Maharaj. It is a beautiful tribute to his contribution. With increasing power, Babar Sher can't be allowed to be showcased as weak. So the Modi government changed the national emblem. Earlier, our national emblem was a line that looked more like a defensive rather than proactive one. In the new emblem, more ferocious teeth were present to showcase its aggressive instincts. This was a symbolic arrival of new India, something which our foreign minister, Dr. H. Shankar, always talks about. A civilizational journey is never complete. Nothing is static here. But the spirit of aggression needs to be permanently imbibed in the psyche. All these changes are a step in that direction.